Well, because I believe in artistry and, uh, and I believe that, um, you know, there's a reason why people are called artists as opposed to just singers. When you're an artist, you, uh, you represent something. You represent something that, that is your own individual take on anything. Whether you're an actual uh, an artist that paints or whether you're an artist that uh, sings or whether you're an artist that you know, composes music. It's your own personal individual taste. And I feel like um, recently in mainstream pop music, that's been diluted. I think uh, artists of all um, the niche genres that used to exist. You know, you had your bands, you had rock, you had, you know, country, you had whatever it was, R&B. It all kind of merged into one in this big giant lane called pop. And I didn't want to be a part of the generic population. I want to I want to do what I do. And that's why I made this album the way that I did. When I'm making that music, if it's coming from the heart, for me, I feel like there's nothing more open and honest than being able to just say and sing what you feel. Those are the most successful artists to just do that. They're the ones who, like, for example, Michael Jackson, okay, I look at him and, and all his little quirks that he has, his chuck moan and all that kind of stuff, that was, he was feeling the music. Now imagine the producer was like, uh, Mike, what do you, what does this chum on mean? I'm sorry, no, stop doing that. Can you stop getting, ah, ah, can you stop doing that please? It sounds crazy. We wouldn't have the same Michael Jackson that we have. Do you know what I mean? He was feeling the music. And that's something that I believe in. I've always loved that style of music. Um, I've been a big fan of, uh, of people like D'Angelo and Maxwell and all these sort of um, soul singers who use facetto as their main vocal instrument, as it were. And uh, I never actually uh, had the chance of recording a song entirely in facetto. I use facetto as a technique sometimes in, in a lot of my songs, but I never really sing the whole song like that. And for people who don't know what facetto is, it's literally using your breathy head voice. And it's a, it's, it sounds like a woman sometimes. Like my own mom said, she's like, wow, I've never heard you sound like that. It's funny, like I didn't know that was you. But anyway, that's a technique we use. I always wanted to do a song like that. And um, I, I think the song kind of tends to go towards the sexy side of things as opposed to a deep spiritual, you know, heavy meaning to a song. Those songs, when you sing like that, tend to be pretty sexy. The facetto is soft and delicate, and then he's got this rough uh, voice of Rick Ross, which just balances it out. I've always believed in that balance. When it comes to collabs, I always try to think, you've got two different voices on a song, and they have to match. You, you know, you can't, I mean, imagine um, Mick Jagger on Mars, it's not gonna work. You know what I'm saying? He's, yes, he might be a classic legend, but just because of that, you're like, hey, that would be a good collaboration. That will make the news. Like, well, no, it's, the song's gonna sound crazy. <laughs> you gotta pick the right voices. So um, I knew that, that Rick's voice would work on that song, and um, you know, I think the end result was great. I think people are getting sick of music that lacks substance. It's the truth. I switch on the radio and I listen to uh, a lot of the commercial hits, and I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm not bashing all, of course I can't bash all of the top 40 because it's not like that, you've got some amazing beautiful songs in there, you've got people like Ed Sheeran who are in the top 40, you've got people who are singing about beautiful stuff, but I think because of the fact that there's a lot of kids who will buy gimmicky records, uh, that tends to kind of fill the airwaves, it tends to fill the top 40 and the top 20 charts, and I think people just want some real music. They want something they can listen to and, and feel and listen to lyrics, you know, to just take you on that journey. The sheer fact that the word real music has even become a term anymore is crazy in itself. Back in the day when you had people who were just singing and you give them a microphone before autotune and when every musician could actually play, there was no term called real music. It was just music. So now I think people want something with substance. So that's why Miguel is bringing it to them. Frank Ocean brought it to them. Robin Thicke has always brought it to them. Some people have only discovered Robin now. I, did, I knew about him when he was doing Cherry Blue Skies. That's what they do. They do this music with, with passion and heart. And I think that's what people want at the moment.